If you've been a subscriber for a while, you know I'm not a half-cocked alarmist. Logic and rational thought should win the day. Getting emotionally high-strung and carried away in times of crisis and chaos only leads to more crisis and chaos. I can't stand it anymore. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Just please, let me handle this. Get out. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Doctor, you're wanted on the phone. Everything's going to be all right. Please. Sister, why do you not handle this? I've got to get out of here. Cool heads have to prevail. Now having said that, there's no denial that a lot of things are happening all at once lately. Earthquakes, solar flares, an active alert for a volcano in Yellowstone, fires in the west, flooding in Texas, and hurricanes in the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. But what we don't want when all the excitement and disasters blow over, or even during a disaster, is to find that even one person has lost his individual liberty just because the functionaries of some federal or state emergency agency decided that it would be for the greater good if people surrendered their autonomy so that big daddy government can come in and make everything all better. Never surrender your freedom. If you give away your liberty for a little bit of security, and you gotta know by now that it's a false security which the government provides, then you deserve neither liberty nor security. I was in the gym today. For some reason, gyms have become these mini theaters with all these wall-mounted TV screens blasting mainstream media, talk shows, and sports channels everywhere you turn. And there's CNN with a banner under the screen which read, police going door to door telling families to leave. Now, I'm all for warning people about impending danger, but if a person doesn't want to leave his home, even during the most threatening conditions, let him stay and weather the storm. You own yourself, and you have a right to put yourself in harm's way if you want. But listen to what the cop on the loudspeaker and what the reporter says. Take a listen here. You are in a mandatory evacuation zone. Please evacuate. This really captures the urgency, Wolf. Of the, uh, of the situation where police squad cars are now going door to door telling people to evacuate. This is now a mandatory evacuation zone. We're in West Palm Beach on South Flagler Drive. You are in a mandatory evacuation zone. Again, it's one thing to warn people that this isn't a safe place to be, but to say that you don't have a choice but to leave is the loss of liberty that no one under any circumstances can legitimately force onto another person. And as you might guess, in regular CNN doublespeak style, after declaring this to be mandatory, the reporter contradicts himself and says the word mandatory is used only to express the real urgency. It is mandatory but that is to express the real urgency and the need for you to get out. Then he lies saying they can't physically go in and force people from their homes. But they cannot physically go in and force people from their homes. Well, this is about as close as they can come to doing that. Tell that to the many victims of martial law during Hurricane Katrina. I noticed during this segment, the reporter took his earpiece out so he could talk about how it's mandatory for these residents to leave. I don't know what dictionary this guy's using, but mandatory means mandatory. You don't have a choice. Mandatory does not mean optional. When he starts to explain that police can't force people out of their homes, you can see that the earpiece is back in. So it looks like somebody may have told him to add that last piece to his story to make it sound like it wasn't so bad. Then we have this viral video from WKRG TV chief meteorologist Alan Seals that got over three and a half million views in a little over a day. As I was watching this, he said two very interesting things. See if you can catch it. We could do west northwestward for several days before turning over the weekend. Now, the models don't control the weather. It's the attempt to keep up with what's going on, calculate it, and regenerate another projection. Now, the, the storm itself has not really changed what it's doing. What has changed is our day-to-day -day assessment and projection. So whatever this says doesn't control the storm. He says the models don't control the weather. Now the models don't control the weather, don't control the weather. And then he explains it's the attempt to keep up with what's going on and regenerate another projection. 
Why would it occur to anyone that these computer-generated models were controlling the weather? Then he says this. Now, the, the storm itself has not really changed what it's doing. What has changed is our day-to-day -day assessment and projection. So whatever this says doesn't control the storm. Whatever this says doesn't control the storm. So whatever this says doesn't control the storm? I have never heard a weatherman try so hard to assure his audience that his projection maps don't control the storm. With all the harp talk, geoengineering, and weather modification, it makes you wonder why he said what he said. Now moving on to Mexico, we've got some strange flashes of light appearing over Mexico City before, during, and after the 8.4 earthquake. This guy's running down the stairwell of his building to get down to the street where he's able to record the earthquake in progress. And in this video, you can see the flashes of light more clearly on the ground and in the sky. Now some people are saying that this is caused by the solar flare from the sun, some are saying that this is nothing more than transformers exploding and light illuminating the clouds, and others attribute it to HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. I'd be interested to see what you guys think about these flashes of light. And if anybody has any other interesting footage, send it to the email link in the description. Also, let me know if you want me to mention your name or stay anonymous. In our day and age of computer technology, even an amateur messing around with imaging programs can fool you into believing almost anything. Some college kids put this video together to make it look like an eagle actually swooped down and was partially successful in picking up a small child and carrying him in the air for a couple seconds before dropping him. But it was just computer generated. So I'm not really sure what to think about this video right here. This is an orb just sitting still in the sky supposedly over Mexico. And according to the person in the video, it appeared over Mexico City before the recent earthquake. I haven't been able to verify that, but if this is real, what is it, who's operating it, and what does it do? In other news, you got this guy saying this on a live broadcast. I'm gonna sit down here with Jake, who's got his dog Bubba. Jake, who is homeless. Jake, you've found yourself some shelter here. Why, why are you outside during this entire hurricane? Well, I chose not to go inside yesterday because the Salvation Army and uh, Russian Winds Homeless Shelter, where they were accepting people, were caught killing everybody that was in there. Let's listen to that again. Well, I chose not to go inside yesterday because the Salvation Army and uh, Russian Winds Homeless Shelter, where they were accepting people, were caught killing everybody that was in there. So they want to help them as much so that they're never just walking out of here and feeling like they're going back onto the street. They work with them throughout the process here to help them adjust to this new world order that they are, they're going to be living in after this. Help them adjust to this new world order, to this new world order. What the heck is that all about? And then you got these guys that stumbled on what looks like mass tombs. And this was supposedly recorded in Houston, Texas this month. Come on, dude. As if hurricanes, floods, fires, and solar flares weren't enough, we also have super volcanoes making headlines. Some scientists are saying if Yellowstone's super volcano erupts, it'll make Mount St. Helens, Pinatubo, and Krakatoa look like firecrackers. There's no doubt about it, guys. These are very, very interesting times. Stay alert, be kind, fight for freedom, and don't let anyone deceive you. I just want to add one more thing before ending this video. Check out these satellite photos taken seven years apart. The top is from September 7th, 2017, showing hurricanes Katia, Irma, and Jose. The lower photo from seven years earlier on September 16th, 2010, shows hurricanes Carl, Igor, and Julia. Copy and paste works great in the publishing industry. I wonder if it's as easy to use in the industry of weather modification. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with others. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe and notification button and you'll be alerted when I upload new videos. Today's shirts for the day are Truth, the new hate speech, Truth is treason in the empire of lies, and McDeaths, eat fast, die young.
Your $5 off promo code is in a link in the description for you for every shirt in the store. Don't forget to leave your thoughts for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next video.